my name is Peter. I'm the wiring manager at Restoration Design, and today we're going to be installing a front harness on Mike's 1967-911. Here we have the H4 headlight socket. We have two options which we offer on our wiring harnesses. One is an unterminated end, which you would crimp yourself. Um, here we have the terminated end with a pigtail, so you would feed this up through the tube behind the headlight bezel, and then you're ready, ready to go plug and play. Whereas an unterminated end, you would be crimping it yourself. When ordering the harness, you just specify which option you prefer and we'll send it out accordingly. So in order to install the front harness for the headlight portion, we'll have to remove the headlight. There's only one screw at the bottom on this car that we'll be removing. These two screws, the smaller screws, you do not touch as they're the adjustment screws for the lens. So we'll remove the bottom screw here. Behind the screw is a little rubber grommet, so you want to keep that on there. Unplug your H4 socket, and this little rubber grommet you're going to want to make sure stays on the screw. Once we remove the headlight lens, you'll see on this car we've got an aftermarket H4 socket that's been installed at some point in this car's life. In order to remove it, or to remove the rest of the harness and feed it through this um, little J-tube, we're gonna have to cut this socket off. To ensure good current flow for our wiring harness, we have to check all our grounding points and make sure they are clean of any corrosion or paint. So in this case, we have a little bit of corrosion and paint. We'll take some emery paper and scuff this surface here, as on the other side. And once we've done that, we're going to coat it in dielectric grease to ensure we have good continuity through the life of the harness. So in feeding the wires up to the headlight buckets, we must pass the cables through the recess provided in the front here, this small hole, um, which mates up to the J-tube you see here. And the J-tube holds your bumper in place and the cables run through. Uh, to make it considerably easier, we recommend removing the J-tube from your unit, from your car, and feeding the wires through this small recess first, then the J-tube, and applying the J-tube out after. To assist in feeding the wire through a small hole, what we're going to do here is offset the three plugs, one behind another, on the harness to reduce the overall diameter going through. So in the absence of lubricant for wire applications, we can use soap and water to assist in feeding the cables through a tight space. There we go, got it. Once we've fed the harness up through the J-tube into where the headlight sits, we can remove this um, electrical tape that we put on to protect the harness from scratching. Again, we can't emphasize enough the importance of using a lubricant, so either an electrical conduit lubricant or soap and water to assist in bringing the harness through the tube. It'll make your life easier and reduce the chances of it scratching the sheathing on the harness. 
So once we've removed our electrical tape we used as a safeguard, we're going to install this grommet here over the sheathing. And that grommet will be placed right there to accommodate the wires that run for the signal light, the horn, and the fog light. Now we feed the wires through this recess for the hole. Now, on many occasions, it may appear that there's no way you'll get a bundle of wires through that small hole. But what we recommend is you take one connector at a time and feed it through to make your life a little easier. Grab a screwdriver and set the grommet in place. Anytime you're working with a sharp object in your wiring harness, be very careful not to poke too hard, or else you could compromise the sheathing and or the shielding on the wire. So once we've fed those wires through, the grommet's in place, we're gonna come under the bumper we'll grab our bundle and feed it through this hole right here behind behind which is located behind the signal light lens once we bring the wires out we'll feed a grommet over the wires place that grommet and then put a grommet here for the horn wires horn and fog light wires So now that we've got the wires through, the signal light recess will feed the grommet over this bundle to secure this part of the harness in place. So now that we've got the wires pulled through the recess for the signal light, we're going to take our grommet applicator here and we're going to feed it over the cables. When installing your new wiring harness, it's also important to pay attention to your grommets. You want to ensure that you do install new grommets since you have the wiring out. They serve two important functions. The first being weather protection and the second, they keep your wiring harness from being exposed to the sharp edges of the sheet metal, as you can see here in the signal light recess. All of the front harnesses for this model are supplied with a fog light wire but it could be the case that your car does not have the optional fog light. So what we'll do is supply you with a piece of heat shrink that you can slide over the wire end and close it up from the weather. So as I mentioned before, it's a good idea to use dielectric grease on your contacts. So we'll put a light coating on these pins. Okay. 
So these are the pigtails we provide and supply with the front harness. Again, we'll put some dielectric grease on the contact points. Despite them being covered with rubber boots, it's a good idea to do that. And then we'll snap the colors together. On the back of our headlight lens, we'll do the same thing. All right, we're ready to put the lens back in the bevel. So on this front harness, we have two grounding points, one on the left or driver's side, and one on the passenger side. This is an eight millimeter nut, which goes onto this stud. So we'll coat it with some dielectric grease, put our ground terminal on, our washer and nut. close up our bundle retainers. As you can see on this car, we've got a fuel cell and uh, a non-original horn relay. So those of you that have original equipment in your car, you'll be hooking up your washer pump or your washer motor right here on this bracket. And your horn relay will use these wires and be located just in the corner. In addition, you'll be supplied with three female sleeves for your fuel sender. And this is your positive battery terminal, which will go onto your battery post located roughly here. As you can see here, we have a master kill switch installed, uh, most likely for some racing regulations and aftermarket relays. Um, each car uh, may or may not vary from original. Regardless, what we've done is we've taken a photo when we removed the original harness to ensure that we're installing this one back in the correct spot. In this case, our harness is gonna run just on the corner of the panel, running past our shock and terminate at the fuse panel. So we'll run that through now. We've run our harness all the way to the fuse panel and we have these free leads remaining. So our next task will be to connect them to the appropriate posts on the fuse panel using our schematic. These three wires will be connected off the panel, two to the Wico connectors and one over here to the brown white and then three gauges, uh, three wires to the fuel gauge. So we've connected all our wires that run from our front harness into our fuse panel. You see the majority of them here. Main power supply is located here and that's for our horn relay. We've also connected our three external wires, two to the vehicle connectors, one of this brown white, and then three to the fuel gauge. Once you're confident everything's tight and secured, you can hook up the battery terminals and power up your car to see if everything's operating correctly. Okay, everyone, I hope you've enjoyed our short video on the install of the 911 912 front harness. Stay tuned for more wiring videos and hit the like and subscribe button. See you guys later.